Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. My name is Jameson. Thank you for liking, subscribing, following along. We're gonna jump into this net build right now. It's a good one. So for this net, I'm starting with a new pattern, something I've never tried, which is a more traditional net. Pretty excited to get it underway, and I'm gonna throw a small little smolt replica in the handle. Now this material is highly figured maple. You might have seen some other maple net builds here on this channel because I got some really good figured stuff. It's beautiful, and the end result is just stunning. I discovered with maple that you want to cut your net strips, your hoop strips, as thin as possible. So think about an eighth of an inch right out the table saw, then run it through the drum sander. So when it comes to making the best net hoop possible, you got to have really flat work pieces. And you can have a really clean cut on the table saw and band saw when you're ripping out your one eighth inch strips like these you see here. But you still want to make sure that the glue has something good to bond to and you have no saw kerf and things like that. Thing with the drum sander is it has about a 1 8 inch minimum thickness that it can run through and you got to pad that up a little bit so i have done just like you kind of see on planers uh i created a just a sled out of three quarter inch plywood and double stick tape on either end of the strips now these strips are cut long so that when the sander runs over them obviously it'll be thinner on each end but that's fine i cut those off run it on through you'll have a nice flat clean work piece flip them over do it again on the other side and you're ready for your steaming. Everything's looking really good on this net. The form fit like a glove, the handle fits beautifully, and now it's time for the glue up. And the glue up is always a little bit stressful, but that's okay because we're using Gorilla Glue. So life will just get done faster. Uh, so <laughs> it's been four hours since I had this sitting in the form. Let's do a glue up. All right, so Cliff Notes version of what went wrong with this. Uh, what actually happened here was the, the end of the net, everything went great on this end where I could properly clamp it, but then you introduce a handle on the other end and you're asking the wood to do a lot of movement. And that's usually fine, but it's just the clamping positions were wrong. I couldn't get it tight to the form like I wanted. Things just didn't come out in the position I needed. So I ended up with some very strange angles occurring here where it just was heavier on one side and it doesn't look right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to redo the form to kind of account for more, you know, what the wood actually wants to do. I'm going to rebend it because I have some other strips to bend with. So I'm going to go ahead, save this handle, steamed, glued, all that. Again. Fruit flies everywhere. New form. This is looking great. I have the holes in the right place. I obviously can clamp straight across the center here and we're going to be in good shape, hopefully. It's a little more gradual on the taper back to the handle. The handle is the same one you saw before. I was able to salvage that. I have this little piece actually applying pressure down so it all stays nice and flat. All right, so that was a bit of a hot mess, but we got it in the form. It's here. It's looking good now. Now I got to let this set, and tomorrow I'm going to glue this thing up, lay down some wax paper, glue it up, and go. All right, so we have net number two in the hoop. In the template and done. Oh. Yeah. And we're going to pull it from the template and fingers crossed that we're good to go. No. What do you mean, no? <laughs> we're going to do this. It made it out of the form and it is not crooked. That's a win. Let's get to Sandy. So right out of the form, you're going to have some Gorilla Glue hanging out, sticking up. So it's time to knock that back and then run it through the drum sander on 120 grit. On this one, this is kind of sketchy. I traced out the place for the fish to live. And then I drilled down with Forzner bits to get my depth. And 
then I came back and I used a router to hand route the actual space for the fish in the recess. Don't really recommend that. I have a better solution in another upcoming video. The end result of all the routing was a clean channel. I just had to go back and do a little touch up with the sandpaper. So thankfully everything went smooth. So because the routing operation was not exactly the cleanest along the bottom, I decided I wanted to actually use some midnight blue metallic epoxy resin. I used my total boat resin to mix up with the midnight blue and I laid down a nice little base for the fish to sit on. Gives it a really cool back and really makes that fish pop out in the end. You'll see what I mean. So I actually made this off of a, well, I'll show you. This little resin copy is actually of this guy right here, the true wooden starting point. And I made a little mold and then, well, cast it. So I'm actually gonna paint this one as a test and uh, let's jump into it. This may be the fastest fish painting you'll ever see me do, but I've done a whole bunch of these now and depending on whether I'm doing a steelhead smolt or a salmon smolt, it's kind of a very similar color palette. Yeah, it was a fun process and here it is very quickly. Painting is complete. The fish, the little smolt looks amazing. This little guy is actually the wood one, not the white one you were seeing earlier. I'm going to go ahead and use the original because I just love how it turned out. They both turned out great, but this one is going to live in this net handle and it's going to be awesome. Let's do it. I did push the limits on this of the maximum depth you want to do with a pour of the high performance epoxy. This was probably a touch over the quarter inch depth. Typically you want to do a quarter inch or less with the high performance epoxy. That's recommended. Then you do a quick couple passes with the torch as bubbles start rising and as it starts setting up. The finished sanding process for all of my nets is pretty similar. So it's a matter of knocking everything down with 120 grit, 150, 180, 220, going to the spindle sander, using that to get all my radiuses perfect, everything nice and even. On my last couple nets I've done, I've actually opted to hand sand all the radiuses, all the corners, because it really adds a nice hand felt feel to it. And at this point, I don't really want to rely fully on a little router bit to give me a perfect round over. So I just do that by hand. This creek net is for fish that might not be that big. So I actually went with the net basket with the much tighter weave. It's still that catch and release silicone but it has a different layout and pattern to how it's tied in because it is a smaller weave. I've really come to enjoy the look and function of the little swivel that I put in the, the bottom for a lanyard, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Woo, all right, I have been sanding for way too long, and I'm at 1200 grit. The actual resin is down to closed cell, so 3000 grit. It's crazy, and it's looking really good. There will be a top coat of satin spar urethane all over this thing, and that's going to be awesome. But first, I'm going to start with something new, and that is Dally's Seafin Ship and Shore. This stuff, I'm going to give it a shot. When applied, it soaks into the grain of the material and hardens by 15 to 25%. That is according to the uh, manufacturer, so I'm going to give that a shot. And it says to always wear gloves with this stuff, so... If you get that in your bloodstream, who knows what it'll do. Probably make y'all loopy. So, gloves. Hi.
Oh. Always give your kids figured pieces of wood. It really helps their growth. Finished coats have been applied. It's now time to put it into the pattern maker's vise, which I'll put a link to up here in the description. I actually did a video on it. It's really awesome. If you're getting into net making or just want to hold something at your workbench, pretty cool uh, old device. But anyways, I'm going to tie in this net basket. Let's get to it. So this little creek net turned out exactly as I'd hoped. And if you like it too, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. It means a ton. Thank you so much for coming along and I'll catch you on the next one.